welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome to this um, talk with Vida Popovic from Bucharest. Um, it's about collective structures and it's in English. I hope you can. It's possible to follow. Yeah, just um, yeah, to tell me or tell us if it's like something that you want me to repeat or to like yeah. explain for language reasons. Just go ahead immediately. Yeah, please. Um, yeah. Um, Veda, yeah, let's start. Veda, you know, from Bucharest, and you, uh, as far as I know, you um, work in different um, collectives and you, um, like, um, you are the chief or the head or somehow part of this from a collective like two and a half years in Bucharest. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about this um, project? Yeah, yeah, of course. So yeah, I'm based in Bucharest. I am part of several collectives that we do political work or activism, as you want to call it. You know, sometimes we use more uh, the term political work to uh, differentiate from uh, NGO uh, structures. Um, and uh, yeah, one of them is a cooperative. So I'm not, I'm not a yeah. head or anything. We don't have a hierarchical structure. Um, and we run a space which is um, a f has the, f the main function is a bar and it's also a theater space mm -hmm. so we produce um, political theater pieces and we also um, showcase other kind of other you know guests uh, that do politi political art, uh, political theater or other kind of performative, Arts act acts, okay. and it it just runs as a bar uh, every day. It's called Makaz, and we founded it uh, yeah two years and a half almost ago, which it feels like ten years ago really. But um, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and um, you but you. Were also um, involved in some kind in also different collectives as far as I know can you maybe uh, how could, would you describe this um, you say there's a difference between NGOs and collectives or, or that's the reason how to make the, uh, some kind of difference mm -hmm. um, can you go tell us a little bit more about how to what or how you define this um, Word collective. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I should also talk a bit uh, in these re in this regard a bit of the background of okay. my collective. So before Makaz, uh, for um, three years, I think we ran um, um, a space which was um, like a um, an anarchist social center, basically, and. That was named Klaka and we had to close that down and then we created Makaz. So basically Makaz is this continuation of the, of the social center and it also represents mm -hmm. the, uh, the principles of the group, you know. So most of us identify as anarchists, anti-authoritarians, autonomists and that is kind of the, um, like the, the basic political ground from which we we uh, act and organize. Mm -hmm. Now the other collectives I'm part of, um, all of, um, I'm also part of, uh, and Makaz is also connected with, maybe it's not so important that I'm part of or not, but it's m more important that um, I'm part of a community in which there are several collectives that form like a constellation if you'd like that we all kind of identify within a radical left position and um, these are uh, also the Gazette of Political Art which is a um, it's a platform for publishing uh, it's just like it's a, like a gazette per se it's an it's a print and it's also uh, online a website and we do there we do um, all kinds of yeah um, just um, 
um, media, like alternative <laughs> media and information stuff, um, particularly concerned with the way political work is intersects with art and um, yeah, representation, representation, representational work. Yeah, uh, sorry. And uh, then the, we have also like a feminist uh, reading circle and design called Dysnomia. We have two um, print products. Yeah. Set and design. Yeah, yeah, per se. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, also other informal uh, kind of groups that work on different levels, like the, of course, the political theater collective that uh, produces the the the, the, the theater stuff and also like a, like a more informal um, action group concerned with like radical queer interventions and yeah you know so um, this is kind of uh, so basically you know we are a, a community that is formed of these collectives and yeah, when you ask me, okay, so what is the difference between this and NGO? Uh, like, um, we are, or like I would say Lamas is not a collect, not this kind of collect because mm -hmm. we don't run a bar or something like that and we don't mm -hmm. publish um, on a regular basis some mm -hmm. kind of print product. So we are not working on some kind of product. Like, of course, we're making events. That's also yeah. some kind of production, of, of course, course, but not in this very regular shifts or yeah. like or have a re rising or re <laughs> working in a bar or raise, rising a bar raising I don't know um, or making regular print products I think that's more mm -hmm. for me this is more to do with some kind of um, very conservative working um, Begriff is a schwieriges Wort das nicht einfällt word um, and um, the yeah, oh, I forgot the question. <laughs> um, so what? Yeah, what? The question was, what is the difference in the structure from your collective yeah. to some kind of club or um, also initiative um, or initiative? I don't know about. Uh, also, could, yeah. yeah, like llamas. Uh -huh. the, I think there are differences because you have another kind of production. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, um, I think uh, so. The rationality of these collectives that I mentioned is that we are based on affinity relationships. Mm -hmm. So when we say when I say we are a, a community, it means that we also share not only some political values but also we share lives per se so we organize our labor our everyday life our um, uh, you know vision for the future our political interventions together as a as a community and um, this has been always like something very kind of um, something that we've like kind of uh, the, the tendency was always there uh, even before Makas but with Makas the difference is that now we have created jobs for ourselves mm -hmm. which you know it's it comes with a lot of problems too um, but what is amazing about it is that we really feel that we pushed further our um, capacity uh, of self-sustaining, self-sustainment and mutual care and mutual support by creating a structure that also makes sure that we can pay our bills and our rent. Um, you know, so that's that, that's like that was a very kind of uh, important step and um, now after two years and a half you know, we are a very popular bar in Bucharest, which is, you know, good, but it's also not so good. Um, and a lot of things happened there, a lot, a lot, too many, too many things, and a lot of them are, like, quite bad. And, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, the amount of work and the amount of, like, emotional and um, just, like, kind of uh, affective... Um, 
uh, consumption is quite intense. But even with all this, the, si the simple fact that we are able to support our livelihoods, um, you know, in a mutual support kind of structure, it really feels that it's really worth it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, before Makas, most of the people that are now working in the bar were, you know, we had like, uh, most of us had like quite shit jobs, you know, working in, um, in call centers or just doing like online sales, you know, a, a, a lot of this kind of very alienating, very like shit work. Um, it paid better, but it was also very kind of a bit uh, spirit crushing. Um, and now with Makaz, you know, the work is not glamorous, it's not amazing, it's not what everybody dreams of, but it is much better in the sense that you really feel that the labor that you're doing goes into a bigger, into a, you know, bigger purpose of sorts, you know. Um, so that would be, uh, I say, the, the, the biggest difference, you know, mm -hmm. so from also like an NGO structure, which, you know, um, the like the collective structure is based on uh, expertise and professional expertise and professional you know like relationships um, and it's also um, the um, what you put as a person into that thing is very dependent on wage wage labor so basically you mm -hmm. You give what you get paid for. That's kind of the relationship, right? And that, and then you have also like um, maybe a context like Lamas, where you have a, a collective that um, you know, like, is created, right? Only yeah. for a temporary kind of uh, project. Yeah. With us, as I said, like our lives, our labor, our art projects, and our like political. Uh, kind of um, dreams are all kind of intertwined and mutually yeah. supported. So that's kind of like... So actually, how much people are working at the bar? We, the Makaz is made up of 10, I think, 10. And then in the other um, collectives, there may be like, uh, maybe it's a total of like uh, 25 people mm. maximum. Wow. Yeah, it's not so so when many you, people when you think about it. But yeah, when you talk uh, before, I thought it's about fifty people. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that would be really amazing. Yeah, yeah. Seems that it, uh, it's very widespread. So, and um, another maybe it's, um, not that in, well, another question: Is it possible for the art project that uh, um, happening in the theater and at Maca? Um, that you get funded for this um, mm -hmm. project, I, get, I think for the bar, you, uh, it's not able. Well, in Austria, it wouldn't be able to get funded for a bar, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for the art project, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. So basically, the financial structure is that. So we we try to organize under um, um, like um, an autonomous direction. And I say autonomous direction because, um, like, practicing a, a more like a radical or full autonomy is at this point in history and in that space in Bucharest. At this point, we find it very, very difficult. But this is like the goal. So this is the tendency. And what we do is that we try that our uh, our projects and what we do as groups is not dependent on one source. So that's how we understand at this point autonomy. So you don't. So you kind of get money from different structures, from different sources that are also you know a bit aligned to your political principles and you try to not be dependent on one, you know? So then you, you can't be like, uh, you know, if that thing is cut, then you're not like, you know, 
um, the whole thing collapses. That's kind of what we try to do. So basically, the what the the art projects are co-funded through the bar, but also through public funds. Okay. It's like this context, a contest in Romania that you just apply for, and it's a contest for actual independent cultural scene. Mm. It's a uh, it's very similar to. Um, like um, like some sort of, like uh, I think who has like UK National Endowment of the Arts or like something like that. I don't know. It's like it's like a special institution that just like runs like these money and that you just apply and the uh, criteria is quite quite varied. It's not like very kind of something very super strict. It's not it's not very bad. It's not also very good either, but it's also not bad. And uh, you can just yeah, um, you, you you can fund your stuff there. We don't um, we don't fund uh, any of our art related projects through private means because all of the private actors on the cultural cultural scenes in Romania are directly linked to um, profit making and capital big capital flows, which we find totally unacceptable to work with. Um, we also apply with like uh, these uh, kind of Western, more lefty structures, you know, which are also like very imperfect because then you have like this, you know, you you reproduce this kind of um, dependency on Western financial flows. You know, even if, even if it's Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung, it's still. It is funds that come from the Western, from Western Europe, and if Western Europe suddenly decides that you know there is like a change in politics, there is like some change of you know Rosa Luxemburg considers to now this year that this is not important anymore, but this is important, then you know you are like cut off from from the stuff, and you can't like influence the decision making there. You know, so this is also not so good. Technically, you know, there are some sort of comrades, but you know, things are more complicated than that. So we also like try to like get uh, grants from that for the for um, projects like the art projects. The Gazette, for example, runs um, entirely autonomously, which means actually that we don't have. I mean, it runs independently, total. It means that we don't have any stable source of, of funding for the Gazette, but it, that's possible because the Gazette is like, uh, it's, it's a different kind of labor there. And uh, yeah, so yeah. And, um, and just, okay. <laughs> and you said that the uh, art projects are also funded through the bar, so there's mm -hmm. some kind of, um, Output of the bar that is bigger than all the wages for the mm. for the people who are working there. Not necessarily. No. Well, the the funding through the bar comes more like, um, for example, we have uh, we are hosting today a show, and we can put like um, a small entrance fee, and. Um, that is also it, that is supported by the bar because. People who come to the shows, they also come for the bar. Mm. So then, you know, I mean, because if it, the, the space would be only uh, an art space, then you wouldn't have people coming there and like pay a small fee at the entrance to see a show. That's like not possible. That wouldn't be so. Okay. But because the bar is running, then you, when you enter the space, you feel like you're getting more. You know, you 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 get the show, you get a, a small party, you get some. You know, you can have some drinks, you stay with your friends. It's kind of a, a bigger package. So that's actually how the you know, and also the bar can like support like lightning and also technical stuff for the theater yeah. part, and also the theater bar doesn't have to pay any rent. Okay. You know, so it's a way of sharing the resources, okay. basically. So that's more like it. But okay. the actual money flow uh, of the bar is at this point just covers rents and wages. Okay, and how did 
like as all people who are working there get more or less the same wages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the cooperative runs like this. Um, the we have some very specific rules, which are um, every person needs to do bar. Uh, labor because bar labor like actually sitting at the bar bar labor is actual serving and also um, like uh, cleaning because that type of labor is very like uh, you know unglamorous unsexy you know it, it's, I mean if you if you cannot do it you, you wouldn't do it it's something like that so the rule is that everybody does that, but also everybody does something else in the bar. Also, uh, and that also would create, uh, you know, eliminates or tries to eliminate the possibility that you have people that only work at the bar. And those people become kind of, they have a, you know, in, there's a hierarchy, you know, within the, the structure. So everybody does bar and something else, like uh, event scheduling, you know, like uh, um, um, getting the merchandise, like the, you know, the, all of the drinks, uh, all of these things that, you know, uh, a bar does. And um, another thing is that we have um, general assembly every two weeks in which um, everybody takes decisions. So, of course, we have a set of rules about like, you know, like who we kick out, kick out of the bar, who we work with and who we don't, you know, who we accept, how we, we ask for money or how we don't ask for money and so on, all of that, you know. But um, uh, at the General Assembly, we also take other kinds of decisions together. So everybody kind of has, you know, formally has uh, the same mm -hmm. position. And um, as far as I know, um, Patrick is also a guest. He was part of a collective in Vienna, the Gagarin. The, and uh, also uh, that about different other projects that sometimes it's very uh, complicated at the beginning of collective structures. If you rise up, uh, if you uh, make a bar or some diff, uh, similar project, um, do we have the same experiences that there was a lot of conflicts between this small team? And what are your uh, maybe now after two more than two years? What on this point of emotional? Um, uh, relationship between each other and the team and maybe there's also some connection um, with the money and mm -hmm. so who makes what kind of labor mm -hmm. what are your um, do you have any kind of advices if um, you would do it again or if we would start to do something like this mm -hmm. um, what, um, what are very important things for you now after these first two years mm -hmm. that um, you would have a closer look at maybe or mm -hmm. yeah 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 yeah. Um, yeah I would also just mention that the experience is not two years and a half yeah, it's, it's, longer. it's longer because yeah. it's a continuity of the collective yeah. Um, yeah I would say that um, you know I think uh, it's really important to really distribute like this I think this was a very good idea to have everybody work bar labor and do another kind of responsibility too so your labor is kind of two folded it can be a bit more like mm, more work on a personal level but in terms of like dynamics of the group and decision making and horizontality it's really it really works I think um, and uh, also I think uh, because we have this affinity structure then it's also for us it's harder to uh, I mean there are a lot of new people coming in but it's also not something that you can just like you know it's not enough that you want to be in the collective mm. you need to build a relationship with the people in the collective and really kind of has have an engagement so basically what I, I say it's also like really great if the peop, each person in such a project besides having you know the motivation of 
doing an actual okay job, you know, not some like horrible job and working with friends and not having a boss which are like extremely motivating things but besides that that they would have some sort of like more like a bigger more politically like stake in this that they see that this kind of self-organizing self-care and support it's fundamental for like building any kind of radical movement or radical change so I think that that's kind of the, you know, this kind of engagement that you see kind of the, this plus stake is like really, that can really make people hold on and be very, yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, trust is very difficult. It's very complicated to build, but it's essential. I, I mean, that's basic, very basic. Um, and it's a process, as I saw, building the trust, you know, it's not like something that you achieve and then it, everything is like, <laughs> heaven uh, opens its gates. And um, I think uh, gender and sexual identity dynamics are very important. You kind of like, you know, collect, we are a collective that is very heterogeneous uh, in that way, so most of us actually identify as queer, but then we also have straight people. We have people that, you know, are more into a more like gender flow uh, or, um, you know, like non-binary kind of uh, dimension, but also like cis people and, uh, you know, so that's like very, interesting to that's like uh, something that really needs always to like like you need to reflect upon like really a lot because the way we are raised in gender roles is like so puts like such a big toll on how we organize in a collective it's like it's insane man it's insane. i mean no matter how you know like you know emancipated you think you are it's like society will you know like in the end like come and like speak for you you know <laughs> or act for you so you really need to you know be aware that it's a process that you're gonna fuck up and that you know the others are there to you know tell you like hey you know you kind of fucked it up there but it's fine because you know we're gonna get over it and you know it's okay something like that so the, the um, have to be any persons who get dropped out in these first years at, since the bar was open, mm -hmm. and it, you told us about what someone who wants to work in this kind of collective has to bring with uh, has to bring with him or her to the project. So how do you get? Uh, is it easy to find new people if someone drops out? Mm -hmm. Who brings all these kind of um, fuels and yeah. motivations? Yes, it's, uh, I don't. It's it's not easy, but okay. it, it's also surprisingly it also hasn't been that difficult. Also, okay. so I mean, we're all we always feel like maybe we could like be a bit more, but then we're like, no, we're fine. Like we we are like how we are, you know. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, and. Um, since we began, I think two people got out of the collective for like uh, personal life reasons, so not connected with like the work. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. Also, another thing that we kind of figured out is that it's best if in a, the collective you're able to rotate responsibilities, which is also like a lot of work but that's like really good that then you don't like have a person that becomes an expert in doing something you know mm -hmm. and that also most people in the collective have a very kind of like uh, holistic like understanding of how mm -hmm. the actual thing works you know so ideally you know, you can also do a bit of accounting, a yeah. bit of event organizing. So if bit someone of... drops out, there's no um, knowledge missing. Yeah, that's yeah. really important. I think that's very. That's the difference between your Baha and Lamas. 
Um, yeah, maybe I will ask um, if Patrick in uh, the Gagarin mm -hmm. was really different, I guess. Um, bit, uh, so my name is Patrick, I work in the um, Café Gagarin, which is a vegan vegetarian restaurant in Vienna. And the development was a bit different. It was a cafe run by two brothers and one dropped out and so the staff and some new people founded the collective to run this place further. So it was a, uh, from this working environment, it became a space, a political space and the collective for more space where people could, other people could do something there. And um, now at the beginning I think we were 13, 14, people in the collective, now it's down to 10 and maybe 3 people are still there from the beginning, so it burned down, it, it, it renewed itself. I'm How many years? 6 years now maybe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, but after 3 years, so maybe half of were gone, also I'm not part of the collective anymore, we have a bit of division, uh, one there is the inner circle or the collective that are there permanently and have different rights and also the responsibilities mm -hmm. and also people that fill in the other shifts yeah. that for more the more working are not involved in the, in the association so much mm -hmm. they can if they want but mainly that for work to fill in the work yeah. and uh, the collective can choose the work which shifts they are cooking and bar shifts what they wanted to do they can have a right to pick them but they also have to have our work to do uh, in the collective uh, responsibilities and um, Looking back, I would say the most important thing is um, to be heterogeneous, a group that or not too heterogeneous. <laughs> because all you have to, and where you are, otherwise people are different. People are, you know, come from their the psychological uh, rage running around with it, and it was very hard. I think, uh, like maybe every group, there's some group pressure, and somebody wants to be bossy or whatever, and some people mm -hmm. don't like each other more or not. And, different expectations and if you're too different it's just too complicated. I wouldn't do it again like this. I would mm -hmm. say um, you sh they should like each other and the views of each other more. It's much more easier. Or if not then embrace it. We are different and we love it that we're different and we stay like this. And it was not always the case like this. So it seems like you have a grown friendship and you have yeah. uh, or other thing is that you have other side projects that you don't have to work all your heart and then you die because you then yeah, don't get it. Like you don't yeah. get the, the the thing that you really want like this, and it mm -hmm. can say it's fine, it's fine. I can give part of myself. I can have the other one like they wanted or a, a consensus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, it's complicated to maintain a friendship or a close thing, and uh, yeah, if it's your only thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we also like realize this that. At the in the first year there because you know the first year was very hard you know it was like everybody was learning everything from scratch and there were the big stakes big responsibilities people had to like have salaries and if it wasn't working like you know so but um, but we learned this in the first yeah that it's actually really important that people start also like yeah doing or continue continue doing other projects and other kind of involvements so that yeah you, your heart is not um, only linked to this project when so when it's kind of like da -da -da -da, you don't feel crushed and with a bar i mean at least with makas it's like it's like there's a lot of like these kind of things you know also in terms of like material stability but also in terms of what's happening there and you know conflicts within the broader like leftist scene mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah but also just maybe I also this uh, is also worth mentioning that Makaz so it works as a co-op and you know the the most important uh, the priority in terms of um, money is paying the wages and also uh, all kinds of like uh, we also like ha um, you know at the beginning we didn't we just paid the labor now we slowly introduced paying medical um, um, insurance oh yeah no every like yeah most of us have medical insurance okay. like we we take care of all of these like internally yeah. but also paying like uh, medical leave of absence 
Ah. So paid medical leave of okay. absence. Um, and also paid um, uh, just uh, a holiday. Yeah, that you get So just, holiday. yeah, gradually we inserted this for the people that work the most. Mm -hmm. So we kind of really try to push all of these kind of <laughs> classic workers' rights, you know, because we really want to not uh, self-exploit ourselves and we constantly rene renegotiate the board, the, you know, the limit of that self-exploitation. Um, yeah, and so besides this, we are the, sp the only space in Bucharest, sadly, it's not something that we're proud of, um, per se, but yeah, the only space that guarantees that if you know if you are targeted from a classist or racist or sexist or transphobic, homophobic perspective, then you will be kind of respected and appreciated, and the person that targeted you shall be excluded. So it's not a space that tolerates people that are divergent, but it's a space that is dedicated to them. So mm -hmm. basically, our, you, we say that, you know, kind of the, you know, the, the marginalized is kind of always right. You know, it's like we don't really negotiate okay. with these things. We don't try to see, oh, what's the truth, you know? Well, the truth is that there are some, like, sexist idiot in the bar, that's the truth, you know, we don't kind of, yeah, anyway, whatever. Well, that's interesting, of course, yeah. as well. Um, so, you said that you are the only place in Bucharest that can... Um, a bar, a bar, yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. They have this kind of values. Um, before this talk, you told me that you are also um, trying to get in contact and starting to make a, a already are doing some kind of network um, in other countries, um, a, yeah, collective network, I don't know. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about it? Well, I mean, we, at this point we're just very interested in it. We, as, you know, as the, col as the older collective and uh, also as individuals, we are part of like all kinds of like you know, anarchist or like radical uh, left or like autonomists, uh, I don't know, anti-authoritarian, or so like housing uh, justice um, uh, networks within Europe. So we do have th these kinds of connect uh, connections with so bigger social movements. But we are trying, I mean, we really want to like build also connections with other cooperatives that have similar like organizing as we do. So have this kind of public output, you know, so we're quite close with Goya in Budapest and um, We know also Gagarin is very also very similar, you know, I mean, it's also kind of the same kind of thing, you know, so we really want to like build up these kinds of things and also maybe Connect, connect well, maybe also with the like stronger cooperative networks um, You know that are uh, yeah more like in the south of Europe. Okay. So we're looking into that, yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, uh, yeah or like, I don't know. Sorry, no talk to us. <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, questions for about the Gagarin. Does anyone have a question about the Gagarin in Vienna? Does everybody know the Gagarin? Okay, you should go there <laughs> once. Go. <laughs> Although Patrick is not anymore part of the Gagarin, I think. I'm still cooking there. And just, uh, ah, I'm still cooking there. And, uh, okay. Serving uh, drinks is a very glorious job. You can choose the music, you can be friendly <laughs> to people. Don't put it under the table, it's a good job. <laughs> Exactly. You create a mood there. Well, I like it. I love to serve people and do this, and it's it's glorious. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I was saying. Um, um, I have never been, of course, uh, not of course, but I haven't been at your bar. But I think I've been sometimes at the garden, and as far as I made up some kind of picture for me, mm -hmm. uh, I think it could be. I think I have to. I'm uh, feeling that um, the garden is more a restaurant than a bar mm. and it has much more to do with 
serving in a nice way and making some kind of um, or be yeah hospitality to guests and as as I have this kind of picture or build up this kind of picture um, the may, uh, say the name again Marcus. Marcus, sorry um, it's more really a bar where you go to a theater and then afterwards or before you take some drinks and I worked for a long time at the c uh, cinema with a bar and there's a big difference between restaurant and bar guests Bar guests, yeah. and we we'll see, we we'll see it tonight as well after two o'clock. These are not the, not the same guests that come for some lunch break at the Gagarin. They can be the same, but it's a different time on the day, and that changes sometimes a little bit. Um, yeah, I can also say it for my uh, view, and for me as well. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. another mood if you go to uh, have a lunch break or if you go. Uh, making some kind of party after having a good evening at the, at the theater or another art, uh, kind of art show. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's maybe a difference in how to serve because at the bar, as a female, at the bar you're often confronted with sexist guests and well, that's my, um, yeah, but I, my experience from the top kino where I have been at the Cinema, but I have a lot of co of course I had these colleagues at the bar, and that was more or less uh, some kind of daily job that uh, situation that a uh, lot of difficult guests as well. But I guess you have also this kind of experience at the garden, but not in the same amount maybe. Yeah, probably don't people know what they're coming for there, so they yeah. don't have this. This amount of assholes was coming from normal. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I think uh, Makar secretly dreams of being a bistro, uh -huh. but we can't, like, yeah, it's like we open at 7 p.m. because mm -hmm. before 7 p.m. nobody shows up. Okay. That's like, yeah, it's, yeah, so yeah. And it runs through the night and it's, yeah. But, um, you know, we have like all kinds, so if you have any like projects or any ideas, we, the Maka, the Makas also just, I mean, its main function besides being a cop is to be a resource for local movements. So we have all kinds of events there, you know, people organize stuff there, they, we have like uh, screenings of like documentaries and mm. films all kinds of debates and discussions and book launches, uh, you name it, you know. So everything that is supportive of uh, local movements that we believe in. So we love to have like guests um, from time to time that can like participate in this, in relevant issues, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, for Lamas, there's some kind of dream to have exactly in this room and the next one, some kind of small coffee bistro mm -hmm. <laughs> re, uh, run by a collective. But uh, that's the reason somehow why we invited you, because we are interested in this kind of, um, uh, I wrote down the word, labor. Mm -hmm. labor yeah. And yeah, actually, yeah, that was very interesting uh, from, yeah, from from you to yeah to hear about your experiences. Is there no one having a question? No. Because at the moment, have, yeah, um, Sophie, thank you. I wanted to know how it was to start it, like on a legal basis. Ah, that's a question. Um, to be a collective running a space, and for example, in some spaces you are not allowed to sell stuff and you have to have tips or like boxes where you you know okay beer is three euros so you put three euros in but you cannot name it you know yeah you yeah, yeah donation it. based yeah. um for regular prices you cannot sell yeah. so i was wondering how you if you um consistion and like i don't know the name like this to run a place a at night License. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. that's a very good question. Yeah, uh, the Anarchist Social Center, the Klaka, ran as a classic radical social center. There was no license, no nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. We had a, a rent contract because we couldn't, uh, it was very complicated to occupy without paying a rent. Mm -hmm. 
um, but everything was donation based. Everything was fantomatic, uh, wah wah wah, you know, <laughs> everything was a bit like that. But also, I mean, there were no wages, no nothing, you know, the rent was like um, um, the third part of that, what it's now. Makas pays uh, wages and rent, which amounts to a lot of money, a lot of money. And that money we need to like have, have it flow in. And because of that, because of the big amount of money flow, um, we needed to get license and work properly. Also because we, ha we are very vulnerable politically, yeah. in the sense that we are uh, constantly screened by police and like, uh, you know, secret services and shit, you know, I don't know, maybe it <laughs> sounds a bit weird, but it's, it's like that, you know. Um, and so we can't afford to be too sloppy with mm. these things. Mm -hmm. Also, normally in Romania, you know, people that do all kinds of stuff, you know, repression is not per se political, but what they do is just they send the, the fisc on you, you know, they send the, the financial authority on you and they destroy your ass. Yeah, so that's uh, so we had so we have a license and we we all of the the um, the um, what we sell goes through the the right. system yeah, yeah, yeah um and we because of because of um, post 89 neoliberal capitalism uh, all of the legislation on cooperatives was destroyed because before 89 you had uh, in socialism you had like very good legislation on cooperatives so actually many 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 worker uh, collectives were organized as an actual legal cooperative now after 89 they destroyed this uh, legislation and they also privatized everything so most of these like worker semi worker owned semi state owned enterprises were privatized so basically they were um, you know expropriated towards private uh, interests and so now you, the cooperative legislation still exists but basically it's not really it's very complicated to do it and it's not really worth it so what we decided to do is actually uh, formally we run as a shareholder company which i know it sounds very bizarre uh, but so a shareholder company is just a company in which everybody you know all of the founders have an equal share of the you know but we have uh, an informal internal um, um, like a uh, way of organizing so that we you know that guarantees that you know there is no danger of you know of the people who are who founded the the actual company who have their names on the actual um, like company uh, doc documentation cannot do anything you know but that's also why we are like an affinity group, you know, because we're not like a union or like a thing like that in which, you know, the formalization of the relationship guarantees your rights, you know. We guarantee our, you know, the respect and the dignity and the rights of each because of our collective kind of affinity dynamic. That That's like what ties us together, not like a formal kind of thing, which is not necessarily bad, I'm not implying, but like that's how we work, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was really a good question, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, another question? Okay, do you, uh, do you think we missed something important? Oh, no, I don't know. Do you have any advices for Ah, no. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, relationships with other projects yeah. in yeah. South New York. How far does your cooperation or um, relationship, for example, you mentioned Goya and Budapest, how far does mm -hmm. it go? Um, 
Well, and uh, until now, it's just mostly that we know each other and we say hi, and you know, if we pass it by Goya and we say hi, you know, I'm working at Makas, and they're like, yeah, woo! <laughs> so it's like more of a like that kind of a connection at this point. But I think the ideal would be you know to also support each other even materially you know so if somebody's in trouble then another cop can pitch in with some money or like with a fundraising mm. event and so also i mean we have this we kind of told each other that listen guys if you you know if you are in trouble at some point and you need a fundraising event just tell us but it's also this that i mean you know so to be honest if we have money trouble in Bucharest, we, we won't call our comrades in Budapest to raise some money, we'll call the, our, our comrades in Berlin or in London to raise the money, you know, so, you know, because of, uh, because of uh, economical, you know, so, yeah. Another thing that I think would be really awesome to implement would be, you know, that people in the collective can, like, work in the other place you know for like a month or so you know just like hang out in the city and like work there you know i think that would be kind of really awesome to implement but at this point both of our collectives are so immersed in the internal like work that you know it's this is kind of a future kind of thing i guess you know yeah, but i think with the this internal you know this continuation of internal work um, that's so difficult I think to get uh, beyond that you know because yeah. the ship is always coming back so yeah. the troubles is always there you know so yeah. I'm always wondering in because it sounds really good and also your plans are amazing I think but the question or what troubles me is always this it stays on most of the initiatives stay on this level with mm. themselves, mm -hmm. even with their own shit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's also what keeps uh, a lot of movements from getting, let's say, bigger or mm -hmm. with more influence. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's such a that's troubling thing and really sad because a lot of energy just Space sticks yeah. with that daily shift, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good point. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, I think I really believe in, uh, like, regional and international, like, cooperation and connection, you know? I think this is really important, but, um, and, you know, there's also a lot of histories with that, you know, too, yeah. like, in my collective, a lot of people, like, they don't do this work anymore because, and also I have experienced this many times, like, we have had so many experiences of disrespect, especially from Western-based movements. You know, there is, a, like, a dynamic of uh, paternalism and um, kind of... Um, yeah, paternalism that uh, goes on even in the most radical like movements and structures, which is like uh, like extremely surprising, but it it happens, you know. So there's a lot of like you know also you know, but I think uh, regional stuff is still really important as is international, but yeah, yeah. I but I agree, you know. I think uh, yeah, it's important to to put work into that, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> no, so, you will be, you will have a workshop tomorrow afternoon? Yes, yes, at so three. At three, yeah. it's called, uh, no black square in the public square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's about, um, what kind of possibilities we have for uh, radi for like political art or radical art in the public space, yes. the so-called public space today, and like what are like the the possibilities for that, and yeah, yeah, also a reflection on this festival, and yeah. 
And do you know already where it will um, start, on which place? Um, I think we're going to do it outside. We outside. can stick to the outside. I think outside is really nice. Yeah. So if someone would like to participate, he can or she can get the information at the Centrale, I guess, yeah. on time? Yeah. Okay, and today um, in like two hours or something, one hour, one, yeah, one and a half hour, is a discussion at the main floor about yeah, the very short title, it's not the best title, it's female curating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's in German, but if you would like to participate, you're very, very welcome. And for the English guests, we will have the headphones again, mm -hmm. I hope so. And yeah, then and all the guests are invited to the discussion and the workshop and all other things at Pipe Yes. Soul. yes. Um, thank you, um, Veda, for the talk and thank I you. hope you enjoy the mm -hmm. Pipe Soul. Yeah, the next days again. Yeah. Also, just find me or the space on Facebook, and just uh, yeah. feel free to okay. to write me or the space. It's fine. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Yeah.